Today was the MetaConnect event, and there was some huge announcements at this event. The event was really, really focused around AI. Now they talked about AI, they talked about the new MetaQuest 3, and they also talked about the new smart glasses that they created in collaboration with Ray-Ban. Now this video is gonna be a little bit less polished than usual, but I wanted to give you a quick breakdown of all of the cool AI innovation and talk that came out of this event. And then towards the end, I'm gonna talk about the Quest a little bit, just for those of you that are interested in that technology as well. I do know a lot of people tune into this channel specifically for the AI stuff. So if the Quest and the mixed reality stuff that I'm gonna talk about later doesn't interest trust you, uh, that's why I'm putting it at the end. And one thing before I get into it, I just wanna point out how cool it is that at the front row of this video, I can see Colin and Samir, my favorite YouTubers, as well as a buddy of mine, Don Allen Stevenson III, who I got to hang out with at the Artificial Conference last month. So really cool to see those people front and center in the audience there. Let's talk about AI. Let's talk about AI. Now they started off the AI portion of this keynote, talking about all of the stuff that they've released this year, as well as some of the stuff they've open sourced, stuff like their text-to-speech translation, their image bind, their segment anything, their audio tools, and of course, course, Llama 2. But the first real announcement was when they started talking about their AI image generation tool. And we call it EMU for Expressive Media Universe, continuing with our animal theme. And here's some of the image generations they shared, like a fairy sloth in a magical forest, a fairy cat in a rainbow forest, an astronaut underwater, palm trees in a snowy landscape, and if dinosaurs were pets. And they also claimed that these generations can be made in just five seconds. He then went on to talk about how this new Emu model is able to create AI generated stickers inside of chats. So platforms like WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, anything you can think of, you'll be able to create an AI sticker with it. For example, Hungarian sheepdog driving a four by four, a capybara with a suitcase, a happy hedgehog on a motorcycle. You give it the prompt and it generates the AI sticker for you. And then you can use those stickers right inside of tools like WhatsApp. In addition to stickers, we're also bringing AI AI editing tools to Instagram next month. What the AI image editing tool on Instagram might look like. He had a picture of himself as a kid and he was able to put himself into various different outfits. He also showed off some examples with his dog where he was able to straighten the hair, do a cross stitch pattern, and here's his dog as origami. Later on in the presentation, they actually talked a little bit more about how this works and gave some additional examples. So check this out. We call them backdrop and restyle, and they're coming soon to Instagram in the US. With restyle, you can create a new dimension of visual flair to your photos. By just saying a simple word or phrase, you can now reimagine or create any filter that you can think of. If you feel like infusing, you know, a cozy vibe, you can type crochet. Or if you want to add a more artistic look, you can just type watercolor. And Restyle makes this really easy. And with Backdrop, it leverages one of our most popular model releases from this year, Segment Anything. And it can cut out any object in any image with just a single tap. So now you can reimagine your background and change the scene with just a few taps. I might type something like surrounded by puppies and this feature will give me an entirely new story for my photo. So it looks like Instagram's gonna have some really, really cool AI generated effects in the near future that actually leverage Meta's segment anything functionality. They also talked about different AIs for different things. They have their main AI, which they just call Meta AI. This is similar to what you'd expect from something like ChatGPT, but it's based on their Llama 2 model model where you could just have conversations with it about whatever you can think of. It's also gonna be able to generate AI images from directly within the app. So for example, on the screen, they said, imagine a sailboat with infinite sails and it drew the image. And here they're showing it off inside of Facebook Messenger, inside of WhatsApp, and inside of Instagram Messenger. So pretty much all of Meta's various messaging apps, this functionality is gonna be added into. But here's where it gets really interesting. They're introducing a whole bunch of sort of niche chat bots and they teamed up with celebrities to be the faces of these various chat bots, but they're sort of trained to talk about specific things. For example, they showed off Max here, who is a sous chef who can dish culinary tips and tricks. So a specific chat bot for getting help with recipes and meals and things like that. And here's Lily, your personal editor and writing partner. And Lorena, the world traveler who would love to help you plan your next trip. And then you have Victor. Played by Dwayne Wade. And he's gonna pull together a workout plan for you and get you motivated. There's 
Dylan, the DIY craft expert, and in one of the best moments from the entire presentation, we got Dungeon Master Snoop. You can play an interactive game of Dungeons and Dragons directly with this AI Snoop Dogg. Who hasn't wanted to play a text adventure game with Snoop Dogg? We've got voice coming over the couple of months, probably probably early next year or something like that. Some of the other niche chatbots that they talked about rolling out are Bob the Robot, who's a snarky robot who can help up your academic game. You've got Brew, played by Tom Brady, who's your sports niche chatbot. Naomi Osaka, the manga master. Chris Paul is the golf guru. Paris Hilton is apparently the detective. Mr. Beast plays Zack the funny man. I'm not saying I know everything. <laughs> Um. And we've got Izzy Adesanya playing Louise, the MMA maestro. Kendall Jenner as Billy, the big sis. Roy Choi as Max, the king of the kitchen. Charlie D'Amelio, Coco, the dance queen. And of course, Snoop Dogg, the dungeon master. Now, although they have all of these AI chatbots designed for specific niches, they're also planning on allowing you to train your own chatbot based on you. So you can train it on your unique interests and expertise. So we've been creating something that we call AI Studio. It is a platform for building these kind of AIs. And we're starting by opening up the API for integrating into our messaging apps to start. And that's gonna open in the coming weeks. We are also building a sandbox so that you know, people who don't code can also train AIs like this. And we're working on that and iterating on it. And we hope to have that out sometime early next year. And we're also working on bringing all of this to the metaverse too, where you're gonna be able to have these embodied these AIs will be able to be embodied as avatars. This is cool. Um, you'll be able to make them as NPCs in the different games and experiences that you build and all. This is so wild. Basically what he's saying is that you're gonna be able to train an AI on yourself that thinks like you, talks like you, acts like you, because it's trained on whatever data you trained it on. And then that character could live in the metaverse and people can have conversations with you in the metaverse, even when you're not around, because AI you will be representing you in the metaverse. Crazy. I think that that's gonna be really neat. And then he went on to talk about how businesses can use these chatbots as well, train them on their own products and services. That way customers can get customer support from the AI chatbot that's trained on your sort of knowledge base from your company, which is obviously another huge use case for these fine tuned custom trained AIs that they're working on. Then after all of that, they got into their collaboration between Meta and Ray-Ban to make these smart glasses. Last thing that I wanna show you today, which is the next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. Now these are designed um, so you can stay in the moment and stay connected without having to take your phone out. You can capture what's going on around you, you can share with your friends and the world. Everything about this is upgraded from the first version. So the quick breakdown of these is that they're glasses that you can wear. They can be sunglasses, they can be prescription glasses, they can change out the lens however you want. There's really nothing special about the lens themselves. There's no like heads up display or anything like that in the lenses. Although Zuck did say at one point that that is sort of where they're hoping to get these at some point is to have that sort of heads up display inside of the glasses. But these ones are really a built-in camera. So they have a 12 megapixel camera. So you can walk around and record from your point of view. They have really good speakers built into them that theoretically really only you should be able to hear because the way the sunglasses wrap around your ear, it sort of directs the sound straight to you and ideally nobody around you can hear it. Now, I do know some people that have the last version of the sunglasses and if you are close enough to them, you can hear them. So it'll be interesting to see if these new ones are improved over that. They also announced that with this version, you'll be able to live stream directly from the glasses. So you can go live on Instagram or Facebook and live stream your perspective on anything. So all of that is cool. And I'm excited to have that functionality. I'm probably gonna get a pair of these Ray-Bans. I can see them helping when I'm filming and I'm at events like this to wear these glasses and get little snippets during the event. But here's where the AI comes into play and what makes these quite a bit more exciting than the last iteration of them. These are the first smart glasses that are built and shipping with Meta AI in them. So starting in the US, you're gonna get this state-of-the-art AI that you can interact with hands-free wherever you go. You know, let's say you're grilling with your family and you wanna know 
how long you need to be cooking that chicken for. You know, or you're playing pickleball and hits the line and you want to know if that's a fault. Or let's say you just want to settle a debate, you know, some trivia as you're going out through the world. Just ask your Ray-Ban Meta glasses and they'll respond and, and, and get you with the answer. So that to me is really cool. You know, right now we've got AI in our pocket. You've got the ChatGPT app. You've got the Perplexity app. You've got, you know, whatever chatbot you like to use in your pocket with your phone. But now if you have a pair of these glasses, you'll just have it right there available to you where in any moment you could just ask it a question and it will respond. Now he also talked about how there's going to be an update to these glasses in the future. So if you buy these glasses, in the future, you will get this update rolled out into your glasses. Starting next year, we're gonna be issuing a free software update to the glasses that makes them multimodal. So the glasses are gonna be able to understand what you're looking at when you ask them questions. So if you wanna know what the building is that you're standing in front of, or if you want to translate a sign that's in front of you to know what it's saying, if you need help fixing this, sad leaky faucet. You can basically just you talk to Meta AI and look at it and it'll walk you through it step by step how to do it. The glasses, they're launching October 17th. You can actually pre-order them now for $2.99. And personally, I'm pretty excited about the functionality on these. Now I'm gonna talk about the Meta Quest 3 in a second here and talk about some of what they announced at that. Before I do, I just kind of wanna give some of my thoughts about this event overall. I think that this event that Meta put on today was sort of a catalyst for mainstream adoption of a lot of this AI technology. If you're already using Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger or WhatsApp, all of a sudden, you're gonna have AI image generation and AI chat and various niche chat bots just available to you in these tools that so much of the world is already using. And when it's just there and available, you don't have to go to some other third party website. You don't have to go to ChatGPT's website. You don't need a $20 a month pro membership for it. There's no real roadblocks because it's just in the apps that you're already using. I feel like the adoption of all of this tech is just going to skyrocket. I also think what Meta's doing here with these Ray-Ban glasses is, is slowly getting the general public to get more and more comfortable with a thought of wearable technology. And their end goal is obviously more augmented reality sunglasses. At this keynote, they did talk about adding heads up display. They did talk about these glasses becoming multimodal and actually seeing what you're seeing and understanding what you're seeing to give responses. It's only a matter of time before we get augmented reality glasses in this same sort of form factor. And I think if a company like Meta tried to go too quick and put too much of this stuff in a pair of glasses like this, it sort of freaks people out. That's kind of what Google Glass did where it just had all of this cool tech in it, but they looked goofy and people were sort of put off by all of the tech that was in these glasses. But if they slowly introduce new little pieces of tech into the glass little by little, next thing we know, these are some of the most advanced pieces of technology we all have on our body, and it just kind of happened gradually. That's where I kind of see this going. They're sort of training us to get used to this wearable tech, and I'm excited about it. I have virtual reality goggles. I have the mixed reality stuff. I'm going to get a pair of these and test them out and see what I think of them. And these are just one step closer to everybody having AI at their disposal at any moment. Yes, I can reach into my pocket, pull out my phone, open one of these other AI apps, but with this, now I'm starting to get used to just talking to AI whenever I need help with anything without even pulling out my phone. Basically saying, hey Meta, my glasses fire up. I can ask it any question I want. It can see what's going on around me to get more context about the question that I'm asking. And then it gives me the response. Our brains are already sort of augmented with the smartphones we have in our pocket. We essentially have a second brain where we can get access to any information we want by reaching into our pocket, pulling out the phone, typing in a query, and then looking at the phone to get a response. Or in some cases, you know, talking to our phone and getting the response that way. This even eliminates one step. I know it saves just a few seconds, but those few seconds are probably gonna make a big impact for how often people actually use this AI technology. So when this technology all gets released and we get our hands on it, I think it's gonna be a pivotal moment for the world of AI and for this wearable mixed reality technology that's starting to roll out at a more rapid pace. We have Apple Vision Pro coming next year. All right, so let's talk about Oculus 3 quickly. I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but it does have some cool features. It's not really AI focused, but I did wanna talk about it because I love mixed reality stuff as well. Mixed reality allows you to bring digital objects into the physical world. Now the biggest upgrade to this technology over the MetaQuest 2 
and the MetaQuest Pro is this pass-through technology where you can see your environment around you. Now that does exist in the MetaQuest Pro, but if you ever tried a MetaQuest Pro, it's very pixely and it doesn't look very good. It looks like a very low quality video of the room that you're in. You don't actually feel immersed in the room that you're literally sitting in. You feel like you're watching a sort of pixely video of the room you're sitting in. It seems like that's solved with the MetaQuest 3 where the environment around you looks much cleaner, less pixely and feels more like you're actually still in that environment. They showed off examples of people playing games. This is like a Lego game that somebody is able to play and that is their actual room around them. It's just superimposing the game onto the coffee table. Same with this there. You can actually see the room around the people, but it's superimposing the game into the environment that they're actually in. It also knows the shape of your room. He made a comment about how you can actually throw a digital ball against the wall. It will know when it hits the wall and that digital ball will bounce back at you. You can be playing a shooter game and you can jump and hide behind your couch and hide from the shots that are firing at you. You're gonna be able to watch things like Instagram reels with your environment still around you. You'll just see it kind of right in front of your face, but you'll still be totally aware of everything that's happening around you. You can superimpose pictures and videos on your walls. The chip that's in it is the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2, which is a much upgraded chip over all of the previous meta quests that have come out. They've got some new lenses, so it's gonna be a lot more high definition, a lot easier on the eyes. And there's a whole bunch of cool games that are gonna be coming out for the Quest 3, like this Wrath 2, which is a game that actually comes with the Quest 3 if you purchase it. There's Assassin's Creed Nexus, which is an Assassin's Creed game in virtual reality. And this was something that I thought was super cool. You can basically sit like courtside at a real live basketball game in virtual reality like you're actually there at the game. That to me is really exciting. I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I definitely want to try that. Some other cool things that they mentioned about this at the event, they're teaming up with Microsoft to make Xbox games available on the MetaQuest 3 and also the Microsoft Office suite of tools like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint are all going to be available on the Meta Quest, which really shows that Meta and Microsoft really are kind of partnering up on a lot of stuff. Because as we heard from Microsoft, Microsoft is not only working with OpenAI and ChatGPT, but they're also working with Meta and the Llama 2 model. But it looks like as part of their growing partnership, now Meta is actually going to integrate a lot of Microsoft's tools and gaming platforms into their hardware as well. So that's really interesting to see. It feels like Meta and Microsoft are almost like teaming up together to sort of take on Google and Apple. So there you have it. There's my breakdown of Meta Connect 2023 some huge AI announcements. I think they're gonna be some pivotal announcements that are going to push the mainstream adoption of AI forward by leaps and bounds, push the mainstream adoption of this sort of wearable, almost augmented reality technology forward by leaps and bounds as well. So really, really exciting news. I know this video is not as polished as my normal videos, but there was so much news from Meta today that if I tried to work all of this into my upcoming end of week news video, the whole video would probably be dominated by Meta. So I figured might as well just make a dedicated standalone video about today's Meta announcements. That way, when I make the news video at the end of this week, I can refer you to this video and then just quickly, briefly touch on all of Meta's announcements in that video. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully I saved a couple hours out of of your life from tuning into the whole event. It's still a pretty cool event if you wanna watch the whole thing, but I pretty much broke down everything they said in this video for you, and I tried to do it as quickly as possible, so hopefully this was helpful, and if you did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, because that makes me feel good. And finally, check out futuretools.io, where I keep the AI news up to date every day. I share all the latest cool AI tools that are coming out, and I've got a simple twice a week newsletter where once a week, I'm gonna send you all the latest AI news going on, and once a week, I'm gonna send you all the coolest AI tools that I've come across. They're super quick to read emails. They come out Wednesdays and Fridays. I promise I won't clutter your inbox, just those two emails a week with the AI news and the AI tools. You can find it all over at futuretools.io. So thanks once again for tuning into this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I really, really appreciate you. The AI world is really ramping up. The hype is getting extreme again, like it was several months ago. I'm excited. I've got a lot more videos. It's getting back to this point where I can't even put out videos at the pace that I have the ideas for the videos. So loving this AI space right now, loving the tech space right now, and so appreciative that people like you tune into these videos and nerd out with me. So thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.